Hi, I'm Jarvis, and you're watching MTV. Today we're talking about Dan Bilzerian, or as his PR firm forces every article to call him, the king of Instagram. Everyone wants to know how to be like Dan, and by everyone, I mean 16-year-old straight boys. He's got it all. The money, the cars, the clothes, the hose, I suppose, um, at least according to the song Successful by Drake and Trey Songs. Damn, Daniel, back at it again uh, with the white V-neck and short shorts. Back at it again and again and again and again. Dan Bilzerian's Instagram extravagance has inspired man children everywhere. If I was a 16 year old kid and I won the lottery, <laughs> <laughs> I'd be living exactly the way you live. And he's become the face of working hard and playing hard but without the work, just play for me, thank you. How, you may ask, does this billionaire playboy philanthropist finance his life of yachts um, and, and thoughts? Well, uh, it turns out he doesn't, allegedly. If you bullied me in middle school, you're probably familiar with Instagram heartthrob Dan Bilzerian. His fans call him the king of Instagram, but his friends uh, call him Blitz. As of right now, he has 32 million followers on Instagram, and his feed is dedicated to three key things. Weed, guns, hashtag America, and uh, last but not least, his harem of scantily clad objects. Women, uh, uh, women. His harem of scantily clad women. You make women, according to them, props. Yeah, I mean, I guess I said the same thing about Hugh Hefner, right? <laughs> is that supposed to be a, a good thing? I mean, they've said the same thing about Hugh Hefner. <laughs> I, yeah, they did. He's talking about Hugh Hefner like he's Mother Teresa. A lot of people speculated where Dan got his money from. Uh, a cursory glance at his Wikipedia page will tell you he's the son of convicted corporate fraudster Paul Bilzerian, who uh, got really rich, <laughs> but get this, it wasn't legal. So he was then ordered to pay $60 million back to the government, and after he paid back $3 million, he was like, uh-oh, I'm out of money. And then the government was like, but wait, you made $60 million doing corporate takeovers. Where's that money? And he was like, la la la, I can't hear you. And that was the end of that. Some claim to this day that Paul Bilzerian's missing 50 plus million dollars is still out there in like secret trusts and shell companies all around the world. Um, but we'll never know for sure what happened to that money. It, uh, it will forever be a mystery. Anyway, on a completely unrelated note, his son Dan Bilzerian mysteriously won $50 million in one year playing poker, which is more than any professional poker player has made in their entire lifetime. But Dan, he did it on skill alone. Yep, with his big giant brain, what a cool guy. Our big man on campus used his big money, big brain, and even bigger beard to make big clout on Instagram, where he can be seen living la vida loca as a modern day Hugh Hefner. In 2017, Dan Bilzerian founded a company called Ignite, and the money hasn't stopped flowing since. And by flowing, I mean down the drain, because last year they lost $50 million. Uh, side note, why does that number keep coming up? Now to be fair, they did make uh, about $10 million last year, so when you add that back in, um, it's about break even. But now they're getting straight up sued by their former president and it's a bona fide fire fest. Uh, get it? Cause, <laughs> cause Ignite? You Ignite fires. Ignite by the way, they sell, uh, uh, hang on, let me look this up. Okay, I went to their website and now I'm more confused. Uh, anyway, we'll come back to that later. The lawsuit against Ignite comes from their former president, Curtis Heffernan. He has this like traditional business background working at companies like Procter and Gamble, who's heard of them? But that's nothing to our self-made man, Dan, who, uh, who pulled himself up by his own trust fund. The former president of Ignite attributes uh, their $50 million loss last year entirely to the buck wild spending habits of Dan Bilzerian. He basically says that uh, everything surrounding Dan Bilzerian's lavish lifestyle is uh, paid for by uh, his company. This includes his fancy mansion. He reportedly paid a mind-boggling $65 million for this mega mansion. Actually, his company uh, pays $200,000 a month for rent, and he was apparently uh, kicked out recently, to which his neighbors celebrated. Just goes to show how popular Dan is, because they even they even celebrate him when he's not there. Last Halloween, Ignite threw a party that involved pyrotechnics, including a parachutist dropping with sparklers. In Los Angeles? Do they not know how dry it is in California? I went on a hike this weekend and the trail caught on fire. Anyway, back to the things that Dan doesn't pay for, allegedly. The yachts rented. The models paid to be there. His 
bed? He didn't even pay for his own bed? Jesus, $50,000 for a bed frame. Is his bed a Tesla? This man better never complain about bad sleep in his life. How's it going, man? Not too good. Slept pretty rough last night. Go f yourself. Essentially everything Dan Bilzerian claims to be, uh, except his immaculate beard, of course, is faked for Instagram, which strikes me as obvious. What? You mean girls aren't chomping at the bit to sit on this man's lap while he pretends to write a book? That doesn't seem very ergonomic. Also, are they on like the 30th floor? Why are you wearing a bathing suit? What a stupid question. If you're gonna sit on Dan's lap, you gotta play by Dan's rules. If you don't show the cleavage, then Dan will make you leavage. <laughs> He'll throw you off a boat is what I'm saying. But hey, uh, could be worse. It could be a roof. So I thought it would be fun today to look at the illustrious life of Instagram royalty uh, with the alleged knowledge that it's all a scheme. Lord scheme. So for starters, we've got Dan's Instagram where he is king and can be found hanging out with babes, drinking beers, poking bears, uh, smoking bud, and shooting guns. Typical badass shit. Even regular nerd shit like chess, which even I know about. Dan somehow makes cool by like adding a hot babe. Or, uh, and this <laughs> comes as no surprise, Steve Aoki. <laughs> Or better yet, Steve Aoki's creepy wax statue. <laughs> Sometimes both. Now we've already seen the Dan man writing his great American novel next to a hot babe, but uh, how about writing his book next to a hot babe? <laughs> now that's content. Putting some pocket change on Cowboy Cerrone. Who y'all got? I think he's betting on an MMA fight here with a very small amount of money. Can you even bet with that much money, Dan? I don't think so. Oh, there's, oh, it's all the cash in the background that he's betting. That sure is a lot of cash. Question, do rich people normally carry around a lot of physical cash? Because Dan does. It, he carries it around everywhere, it seems. I, for one, have no idea what you would do with this much cash uh, during a chess game. Don't you have like Venmo or something? Or like a wire transfer? It seems inefficient, <laughs> if you ask me. Uh, and heavy. Rappers do this when they want you to think that they're richer than they actually are. I didn't think that rich people needed to do this. Are you on your phone? Are you betting on a chess game while you're on your phone? <laughs> if I were betting against you, I certainly wouldn't allow this. Just gonna move my pawn to e4 because that's a chess move. Mm. Oh, it's scheme. Oh, sorry. Uh, gotta take this. Gary. <laughs> Gary K. It's Gary Kasparov. Um, no, I'm not playing chess. While I am familiar with the game of chess because I'm a nerd, I can't be bothered to figure out who's winning because they're using this weird chess set and I don't know how a monster truck is supposed to move. Holy shit, wait, is that, is that women in bathing suits on their knees as the pawns? Are you f kidding me? Well, I guess we know what he thinks of women. Uh, he thinks they can move two spaces forward if it's their first move. Giving away another 150K of Alistair Co. products, free shipping, no gimmicks. Last time you guys crashed the site, doesn't sound like a very stable website. Dan, it's 2020. Click link in bio and tag three guys who can't get laid. That's rude. It's a pandemic. Here Dan is offering to give away $150,000 of uh, his pheromone infused men's product. So first of all, uh, Whose pheromones? Where did you get these pheromones? Uh, I asked. <laughs> um, <laughs> also, I've just received word from someone who has uh, tried this product and rumor has it, the bottles are filled with snake oil. Gary. There are too many things to talk about in this photo. Like for example, why is there a giant stack of cash there? He's not giving the stack of cash away. I can only assume that because there's no cleavage in the photo, he had to supplement it with uh, cash and bongs you know, the other two aspects of his personality. I really can't tell what this company does exactly because judging from Instagram, they sell bathing suits, weed, and deodorant. Oh, well now I feel dumb. Ignite sells THC, CBD, and last but not least, beverage. I can't tell you how good it feels to come home from a long day at work and toke up on some beverage, but that's not all because Ignite also sells everything else. CBD, THC. Because Ignite is the premium lifestyle brand for the discerning individual. Obviously, I mean, what sort of discerning individual wouldn't want to put a, a goat skull 
on their no-no places. This Goat Skull logo, which is uh, for some reason the logo for Ignite, I have no idea why, is plastered everywhere on his Instagram. I'm pretty sure this man thinks that if he puts his logo on something, then it counts as a business expense. Models, throw a goat on that Shirts, Goat Skull. TVs, Goat Skull. Military turret, uh-uh-uh, that's Goat Skull turret to you. Military turret is my father's name. <laughs> Speaking of military turrets, let's talk about how Dan Bilzerian thinks he's a fucking G.I. Joe. For starters, he cannot stop talking about the fact that he went through some amount of SEAL training that he did not finish, but he claims that he got kicked out right before finishing because he was like too much of a badass or something. And at some point he says that he broke both of his legs and continued the training anyway. None of the story makes sense and he's horrible at telling it. He goes, you're about to be medically retired from the military, he goes, for broken legs and you want me to request or approve a request for you to go to SEAL training. He goes, how f stupid are you? He also gave a million dollars to help finance the movie Lone Survivor in exchange for like, a role as an extra, and then they cut his part in the movie, so he sued them, <laughs> so that's funny. He also has a giant collection of guns, which I won't be showing in this video, because like Dan Bilzerian, I like money. My greatest fear is that someone will break in and I won't be able to decide which hashtag gun to shoot them with. Oh no, not the hashtag gun. <laughs> Freeze, I've got a trending topic. Also, your worst fear is that you won't know which gun to shoot a burglar with? Minus snakes. And worst of all, and I cannot stress enough how bad this is, and I can't show a lot of the visuals for this, which I'm about to describe, because like I said before, I like money, I don't wanna get demonetized, especially on this guy's behalf. So um, the stuff that I'm talking about, I'll show some headlines. There are videos, I won't be showing them, but they do exist. In 2017, during the horrific Las Vegas shooting, Dan Bilzerian tried to get a gun from a cop to like, I don't know, live out his hero fantasy and save the day. It's very weird, here's a play by play. He runs up to a cop who's taking cover, already a bad idea. He then claims to be a cop. Spoiler alert, he is not. Then the cop is like, I don't know who you are, you random man. Can't you see I'm trying to defuse a lot, an active shooter situation? Dan Bilzerian proceeds to beg for a gun like the grumpy baby that he is and shows his creds and, and keeps sort of reiterating that he's already shown him his creds as if that's the problem here, uh, which, uh, the creds are fake, by the way. They're, they're like not real. He's not a real police officer. He just claims to be one. And finally, Dan childishly gives up and uh, passive aggressively is like, I guess you don't want help. It's like, no, uh, yeah, man, not from you. Anyway, uh, sorry, I got a little, Got a little flustered discussing that, but he put himself and a cop in danger during a tragedy. Also, he claims not to know that his friend was behind him filming him in the third person, like it's fucking Gears of War. But with his track record and the fact that he was like posting Instagram stories uh, during this situation, made it seem like he cared far more about himself and how he looked than like getting himself or the people around him to safety. Anyway, that's uh, the worst thing I think he's done other than allegedly uh, kicking a model in the face with a combat boot. Allegedly kicking a woman in the face at a nightclub. Did you do that? Um, well. I've never half-assed anything I cared about. Everything I do is on the highest level and Ignite is gonna top everything I've done before. He was right. He definitely didn't half-ass running his entire business into the ground. Is this an optical illusion or is he throwing a small child off the boat? I'm gonna assume that's an adult, but because we've never seen the same person twice on his Instagram, we'll never know. Except for Steve Aoki, of course. Safer than a roof. Is he implying that he's thrown a girl off the roof? Yes, he has. Apparently he threw some naked girl off of a roof during a photo shoot and uh, into a pool. He was trying to do it into a pool. He wasn't just like, <laughs> he wasn't like, this is Sparta. She broke her ankle because she like missed the pool a little bit. And when she threatened to sue, Dan Bilzerian's attorney uh, implied that Dan was gonna take all of her possessions and blow them up in the desert. So, uh, couple of great guys. But if you think his Instagram is bad, his Twitter is somehow worse. If I had to guess, it's because on Instagram you can be distracted by the pretty pictures, whereas on Twitter, you've got to focus on the words. And when you focus on Dan Bilzerian's words, you realize how much of a dumb donkey this guy really is. I finished my book, 360 pages in 57 days. It took me 15 hours a day with one day off. 
I only smoked weed three times and I went 10 days without sex. What? You only smoked weed three times in two months and you went 10 days without sex? That's crazy, man, congrats. Why does this read like a word problem? All right, class, if Dan Bilzerian wrote 360 pages in 57 days, worked 15 hours a day with only one day off, how much shit is Dan Bilzerian full of? All right, pencils down. Also, since he's talking about it so much because he can only talk about the same things over and over again like a weird chat bot, I suppose I should talk about his book deal. In 2016, he landed a book deal with Simon & Schuster, who's one of the largest publishing houses in America. And I mean, congrats, man, who wouldn't want to tell the story of this, you know, crazy life. But then he was dropped from the book deal when he failed to turn in a manuscript, so fooey. But Dan claims that's not how it went down. Dan says that they had somebody ghostwrite the book and it sucked. And when he turned in his new manuscript, it was too badass for the publishing company. So he's just gonna release it independently. And when it comes to deciding who to trust between a giant publishing house who has a lot of projects on their mind and uh, a narcissist who is known for embellishing stories about himself, I gotta go with my boy Dan. People who don't matter, criticize. Okay, so first off, grammar, my guy. No wonder Simon & Schuster dropped your ass. Dan Bilzerian's the kind of guy who throws a comma in a sentence that doesn't need one and thinks he did something. I assume he's trying to roast people who criticize, like this guy, but it reads like he's telling people who don't matter to criticize him. So uh, I'm just following orders. Also, Dan, if you're watching this, this is, uh, this is good faith criticism. Um, I'm criticizing your actions. I'm trying not to take too many uh, shots at your identity or you as a person. Though, ooh, it would be so easy. Um, like I could, I could mention how your head looks like a hexagon. But for the most part, I'm trying not to take any, take any low shots. You know how, how like when you said that ugly women hurt your eyes. Anyway, I read this tweet and then I read the tweets that came after this, and it felt like someone was playing a cruel joke on me. People who don't matter criticize. Followed by, if someone can't swim, their parents are failures. <laughs> All right. So first off. Fuck you, actually. This is like the pot calling the kettle black if two seconds before the pot was like, people who point out the color of the kettle don't matter. Also back to this elitist ass swimming tweet. I didn't learn to swim as a kid. And yeah, I grew up poor, but you grew up in an 11 bedroom mansion with a silver spoon sticking out of your giant hexagonal head. Also my parents, uh, weren't indicted for securities fraud. But you're right, my parents are the failures. After all, I criticize, so I clearly don't matter. I don't care what anyone says. If you're a dude and you pay these bitches on OnlyFans, you're a sucker. You know, legend has it that if Dan Bilzerian contradicts himself three times in a row, a Victoria's Secret angel gets her wings. Calling dudes suckers who pay for OnlyFans is a weird opinion to have coming from coming from someone who pays for models to stand next to him. Fun exercise I like to do is imagine a model sitting on Dan Bilzerian's lap as he uh, types out this misogynistic nonsense. I've also got to say that it's not a surprise that he pays these models. And I'm sure he's not paying all of them. I'm sure there are people who just like to hang out at his house, cause like who wouldn't? But he never tags these people and they're always wearing his merch. So there's clearly like an exchange going on. Cell phones and social media have really overstimulated people. And I think it's a reason for the recent increase in ADD and anxiety. I read a book for the first time in seven years. Use this time to bang out some books, have sex, don't stress, and calm your mind. Congrats, I think? This is like a weird eighth dimensional flex that my tiny brain can't understand. <laughs> By the way, it's not the 80s anymore. It's ADHD. Shout out to my ADHD homies, inattentive gang gang. Celebrities need to stop being concerned with their image. Be authentic. If people are offended, don't apologize. Tell them to suck a dick. What? Dan, can I call you Dan? I want to call you PNG because sir, you are all image. Don't believe what you read in the press. Almost every article written has an agenda and a spin. Once again, coming from a man who has faked his entire image, this is hilarious. Uh, because Dan Bilzerian has more spin than a fucking Beyblade. People that ask you to pick them up from the airport are fucking assholes. Whoa, man, don't stress. Bang out some books, calm your mind. <laughs> and last but not least, what if you had everything and it wasn't enough? Oh, this is kind of sad. It's a rare moment of transparency for a man who has a grenade launcher in his profile picture. <laughs> so it's safe to say that these tweets are hot garbage. But the fun doesn't stop there. There's an entire YouTube channel for Ignite with hundreds of videos that I won't force upon you right now. Okay, maybe just one clip. The first time we were here, 
we didn't even notice the bar. And then the second time we came, I was like, wow, that's a beautiful marble bar. Holy sh! that's interesting. I was hoping we'd get to see his $50,000 bed frame, but no dice. Uh, I, I mean, well, I guess technically there are probably dice in his home. He does, he does like to gamble. Anyway, back to the lawsuit. It's becoming clear that Dan's days in the CBD slash bikini slash pheromone business are coming to a close. An independent auditor said that the company's failure is imminent. And this report from TMZ lists a bunch of the things that Dan spent money on, including a $60,000 Star Wars set, whatever that is, the famous $50,000 bed frame, $40,000 rock wall, 15K on a, 15K? on a ping pong table and a $88,000 vault. Now you may think that $60,000 on a Star Wars gun set is a lot, or you may have no idea what it is, like I do. But imagine how much money you save when you're not the one paying for it. Huh? Also, what else are you gonna put in your $88,000 vault? St stacks of money? Who has those? Now, Dan Bilzerian hasn't spoken publicly about the spending, but rumor has it that he named the company Ignite because he wanted it to revolutionize the industry of setting money on fire. Oh! Also, in Dan's defense, the $40,000 rock climbing wall is a necessary business expense if you consider that it offers respite for those looking to plan their escape from Dan Bilzerian. Some of you are probably like, this isn't the Dan I know. He's a business genius. He said he would run a tight ship. And he did. Uh, that ship is the Titanic, unfortunately, but he stuck to his word. And I'm sure by now it's not surprising that they took in coronavirus aid money and uh, tried to characterize it as income on their books. You know, like law-abiding citizens do. I personally find this really hard to believe from a man who's committed his life to authenticity. It irritates me like when people say that I'm not authentic because I take like great pride in like, you know, being fucking 100% honest about everything. They also paid $26,000 to boost Dan Bilzerian's Instagram following. To which I'm like, do you not have enough followers already, Dan? Could just send some my way, at Jarvis on Instagram and Twitter, always be plugging. Then I realize they're probably referring to the Ignite Instagram business pages that have hundreds of thousands of followers and basically no engagement whatsoever. And let's jump back to that $65 million mansion that Dan wants you to think he owns. The article states that the former president of Ignite came to Dan Bilzerian and it was like, hey, coronavirus, remember? You probably don't need a $200,000 a month mansion. And then Dan Bilzerian was like, but I want to host summer pool parties. Anyway, as of right now, Dan Bilzerian is pretending coronavirus doesn't exist. I mean, honestly, my life hasn't changed a f***ing bit. Traveling the world, uh, well, he's traveling to the countries that Americans can travel to right now. So he's in Croatia. In conclusion, Dan Bilzerian is the poster child for, uh, don't believe what you see on social media. But hey, he's not all bad. Here are 10 women who don't regret partying with him. <laughs> they could only find 10. If you're following Dan Bilzerian, if you're a fan of his stuff, it, I, I don't have a problem with you so much as him being like dishonest about his life. I just think it's important to remember that on social media, you're gonna see a lot of aspirational content and the realities of it are probably not as you know, uh, as good as they seem. Everything that glitters ain't gold, you know? But only shooting, shooting stars can break the mold. Came up with that one myself. Living the life of Dan Bilzerian uh, is, is probably not a goal worth pursuing because even Dan Bilzerian isn't living the life of Dan Bilzerian. You know, you should look at Dan Bilzerian's Instagram where he's like hanging out with hot babes on a yacht the same way you look at Scrooge McDuck diving into a, a sea of gold coins. <laughs> Ain't gonna happen, my guy, unless you can figure out how to turn into a cartoon duck. Thanks to Anna Maria Anastova from Bulgaria, because we we're talking about Bulgarian Zeppo snacks. Thanks to you for sending me a message on Instagram. I have no idea if I'm saying that right. If you want me to butcher your name, do what Anna did. Also, listen to my podcast. Um, I've linked it and I need to promote it more. So this is me doing that.